thanks for choosing to watch the video. If you enjoy it, then please like and subscribe and all that stuff. We're still in lockdown. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna have a look at exactly what lives in my pond. So on the last few videos, I've been on a bit of a mission to make sure that we keep fish and fishing in each video. And in the last few uploads, I've been able to do that by using fishing material that I've got that was captured from before the lockdown. But now all that's gone, it's been used, and so we've got to get a little bit more creative. I did a little bit of a poll on Instagram. I asked in the poll, in the next video, do you want to listen to me talking about rigs? Uh, or do you want to find out exactly what I've got in my pond in the back of the garden. Now my pond has featured in the backdrop of a number of sort of intros and bits and pieces in previous videos and it was no surprise that about 80% so most people, nearly everyone, was curious as to exactly what's in the pond. So that's what we're going to be doing today which is quite exciting. It needed a bit of a clean out anyway. Um, the water's not as clear as it should be so what we're going to do is we're going to drain it down a bit, chuck the waders on, I'm going to share with you exactly what I've got swimming in my pond. So here we go, this is the pond. You've probably seen it in the backdrop of a few videos. Uh, it's quite a big pond. Um, I don't know how many gallons exactly, but you know, it's a reasonable sized pond. To the right of the bridge there, it's a couple of foot in depth. But to the left of the bridge, it actually drops down to about four, four and a half foot. With that depth, you can keep some quite decent sized fish in there, which I'm looking forward to showing you. In the second half of the video, what I'm gonna do is just briefly go through what's involved in uh, having a pond like this and maintaining it. With a pond, you have got, you know, pumps, uh, filtering systems, you've got UV bulbs and an aeration system, and I can take you through all that. Just in case you're thinking of getting a pond, it does take a bit of maintenance, but I think it's worth it. It's gonna be a very bright day today. You can already see the sun coming around and hitting the pond. It's gonna come around the house and it'll be directly on us. Hopefully that's not gonna affect our filming too much because um, obviously I'm going to be soaking wet, I can't keep out, coming out and messing about with the camera but I think we're going to be alright. So as you can probably see, you know, it's full at the moment but we're going to drain it down, take about a foot or two out of it get in, have a bit of a fish around and see what we can find. There's about 20 or so fish in there, a uh, range of different sizes what we'll do is obviously we'll go through them from small to large so the fish are getting bigger through the video I'm only going to get her out around about six to ten of them because I don't want to be getting them out unnecessarily. The ones that I do get out, I'll probably get out quite quickly, give them a show and uh, put them straight back. Um, I don't really want to be handling them unnecessarily. Uh, they're my pets at the end of the day. There are some absolute crackers. There's a couple of real special ones that I want to share with you. That is the grassy and a lovely fish that we've called Bruce. So let's get in the pond, have a fish around and see what we've got. Let's have a little bit of a fish about and see what we can get. He's got getting all the nooks and crannies. They know where to hide. Surprisingly difficult to catch. He's a cute little one, isn't he? Like a little common. Another one, pretty little koi. Got a few of these in here. About three or four around this size. It's surprisingly tricky to catch them. <laughs> Normally better at fishing than this. There we go, a nice golden north. We call him Popeye. Way. Well held. Way. <laughs> 
really bright out here, isn't it? I can't believe I'm fishing, this is brilliant. There you go, like a stunning little fully scaled koi. Awesome. Stop. <laughs> there we go, there's another one, another koi. Mirror-like scales, stunning little fish. I know, this is the next best thing, isn't it? I've had Bruce a few times now. Um, obviously, I'm gonna show you him at the end because he's an absolute corker. But I keep catching him, he's obviously a bit of a mug fish. There you go. It's another koi, fat one this one. Stunning colours though. Awesome. It's starting to get a few repeats now. <laughs> come down to the shaded part of the pond for this fish when you get it out you'll see why so yeah look you'll see the sun was absolutely bouncing off this you couldn't see any of the detail in it so I've come down to the shaded part of the pond it's a special one this one for us my wife got me this one absolutely stunning completely ghost white Moved into a shaded spot to film these ones. Getting blown out by the sun. These lovely coys with a lot of white in the sun just bouncing off of them. What a stunning fish. Probably the biggest koi in the pond. And they've got a spread out pattern like this. I think that, that they're the more expensive ones. So, so this one is probably worth the most amount of money I'd have thought. Stunning fish. they do get right in the corners you know right you have to cover every single inch <laughs> I really do want to get this grass carp for you he's a lovely fish caught him three times and he slipped the net three times <laughs> but then we know what they're like don't we Boy. Oh, he's gone oh, he got away again three times he's got away now There we go, one of the bigger one. There's the grassy. He's been a handful. What an awesome fish. Incredible. He's stunning. He's got a slightly wonky tail, poor fella. But a stunning, stunning fish. King of the pond, Bruce. And there we go, there's Bruce in all his glory. Isn't he fantastic? 
nearly a common mix of koi. Beautiful colours. Awesome. So there we go, obviously we're at the pond now. I um, hope you enjoyed that. I hope the light is like I say, it's very, very bright. I found a little shaded spot here, but it's very bright in the pond. Hopefully all the fish came out okay. So those are the main characters in the pond. That's my A-team. Uh, if you did just want to see the fish, um, then you might want to stop watching here. You know, go and watch some of my other videos maybe. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spend five minutes or so just running through what's actually involved in looking after a pond like this, you know, in terms of maintenance, how much work actually is it? You know, is it, is it a real faff? Um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take you through exactly what's involved in looking after the pond and looking after these amazing fish. I don't know if you can see that, but water is coming into the pond there. The main maintenance here really is a pump. You've got a pump in the bottom of the pond that's pumping water out, across some filters, across a UV bulb and then back out into the pond via the outlet that you can see there. And that is the main thing really that needs maintenance. I'm just going to get the pump out so I can show it to you. So there it is, that's the pump. Um, it's a sort of sealed unit that's got the pump inside. Basically, you, every now and then I might have to crack open this casing to get to the pump and just make sure that there's no muck around it. Uh, if there is, just clear it out and then literally close the case back up and put it back in. So that's, that's the pump. Basically, what happens is the pump sends water up this pipe here. So that's the inlet. It will come into the system it goes through the filters and it passes over a UV light. Then it actually will take it back into the outlet and send it back out into the pond uh, a lot cleaner than where it, when it came in. And that's, that's, this is the main thing that probably needs maintenance is your filtering system. So, like I said, inside there you've got filters, obviously. And the other thing that I mentioned there was a UV bulb, so the water actually passes over that UV bulb and it kills bacteria as it comes across the bulb and then passes back down through there. So the only sort of regular maintenance that you need to do, like weekly, you take this end cap off which just kind of screws off like so. You turn this 180 degrees so that faces the other way and what that actually does, if you turn that 180 degrees, it actually, the water that's coming in through the inlet will then pass out here and not go back into the pond. Meaning then water will flush out here. You can get the handle, pump it up and down, uh, you know, probably only about 15 times, something like that, 15, 20 times, just pump it. You'll see the water that's coming out of here will be very dirty because it's taking all the mud and the grit and the dirt out of the filters, passing it out onto the floor. Uh, and then you leave that to settle and once that starts to run clear, you can turn this back to 180 degrees um, and the water will start flowing out the outlet and back into the pond again and you can put your cap back on. So that's all you have to do sort of like on a regular sort of weekly basis um, in terms of maintenance. Uh, but what I'm going to do today is a much deeper clean that I'll do once a year. Um, yeah, but you know, don't think you've got to do what I'm going to do now regularly. It's an annual thing. Uh, weekly you've just got to do kind of as I've explained there. So there you go hopefully you can see that I've now opened up the filtering system look at these filters. <laughs> wow yeah they need a proper proper clean. If some are too dense they might even need replacing but I think they're going to be all right to clean. <laughs> The 
taken the filters off that were on the outside of this unit and inside there is the UV bulb, a long UV bulb that's got a quartz sleeve over the top of it. And I should have mentioned the quartz sleeve because that is the only thing that I've had to change a couple of times. Um, just when it's got two lines scaled up, you know, hard water on it, stops the, stops the UV rays coming out the bulb. Um, and obviously that quartz sleeve is there to, um, you know, protect the bulb from the water because electric and water don't play nicely. So that is the only other bit of maintenance that you might need to do. These are in a mess. So there we are. They're looking a lot cleaner, aren't they? They're looking a lot better. So the only other annual job that I would possibly do is check the quartz sleeve and maybe swap the UV bulb. And, and that would be my annual overhaul of the of the filter okay so that's it all put back together and that's that done for another year and so apart from the pump and the filtering system and the uv that i showed you before the only other thing that you need is a way of putting oxygen into the water and i do that via an aeration system so you can see you've got these don't know if you can hear but that is actually pumping out air uh, i've got an air pump that's underneath the deck in here a load of these hoses off of the air pump, these on the end, and these are actually slung out into the pond, and they actually put oxygen into the pond. Um, and those are really, really important as well. You know, you, you can't have a pond without those. The fish need that oxygen, they really do. There are other ways of getting oxygen into the pond. Um, another way is, is plants. I mean, you, you, you can supplement these with plants. You can't do, do away with these, you do need these. Yeah, plants are a great way to add oxygen into the water. Unfortunately, uh, that grass carp makes very short work of any plants that I put into the pond. Now, if anyone can give me any advice on what I might be able to do to combat that, um, then let me know, because I would love to have some pads in the pond. You know, wouldn't it look great? Um, each time I do it though, um, you know, grass carp, they, they love the roots of plants, don't they? So they literally upend them in a very, very short space of time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the aeration system. Obviously you've got to feed them. This is quite a big sack. Um, what is that, about 11 kilos, I think it says on it. Um, and you know, that's what they're eating. They haven't eaten what you've put in within five or 10 minutes and you're putting too many in and you can pollute and color the water. So that's the food that we feed them. They don't eat that much. You know, it doesn't get that expensive. Uh, and you've got to bear in mind that they, um, they stop feeding through the winter or they feed very little, uh, bringing a sort of wheat germ based food through, through the winter, sort of from November through to about March. Uh, but they really don't eat very much through the winter at all. <laughs> kind of kind of indicates why our fishing for carp is so hard in the winter because they really do shut down. Um, they will then start to feed in about, you know, March, April, depending on the climate, and they will get more and more ravenous, you know, towards summer and uh, feed right the way, as I say, from sort of like, feed quite hard really from, from April through to, through to sort of October, November time. So there you go, that's, uh... That's all that's really involved in looking after the pond. I don't find it that much work really, not in comparison to what I get from the pond in return, you know. It's nice having the pond and having the fish and just the sound of flowing water is really nice while you're out here in the garden. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be without it. So there you go, that's the video. Um, I do love having a pond, you know, it's great having fish. I love watching them, you learn a lot from uh, from watching them I think and seeing their feeding habits and the way they react through the seasons and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, do love having a pond. Uh, can't see me ever getting rid of it. If you're thinking about having a pond, my advice would be to just do it. But like I say, that is this video complete. If you did enjoy it, then please like and subscribe and all that stuff. I hope you're all keeping healthy and safe and I'll see you in the next one.